I had moments where it doesn't matter how resilient you are, you have moments where I was like, I don't think, I don't think I could keep going. Welcome to the CEO Stylist Podcast, where two unlikely CEOs come together and rewrite the narrative of what it means to be a CEO stylist. Yavanka Loria and Kirsten Harris are on a mission, giving stylists permission to join the movement of artists breaking the mold of what is meant to be for the hair industry and creating the life and schedule of their dreams. Fast forward through many failed attempts and lessons learned in the process, it's time to level up the playing field. It's time to call BS on what's been done before. Yavanka and Kirsten are ready to share it all, defying the odds of the industry and teaching you how to do the same. I haven't even asked you a question. <laughs> I'm sweating already. So the awesome. offline chat was what are we going to talk about today and the headline is, and please don't cry yet, I think she's going to, I can see it already in her little face, when your best team members leave. Yes, when your team members leave, I was like, you know what, we need to share this. because yeah. you've got a story to tell. I do have a story it's to hectic. tell. It's been It's been fucking <laughs> hectic and on top of... It being hectic, I've been dealing with perimenopause, with emotion. What's that, how's that oh, going for I, that, you? That's a whole nother, I don't know if I'm qualified enough to speak about it because I'm just going through all the feels. Um, but this is something that um, I think a lot of business owners are going through and also perimenopause. Well, perimenopause, <laughs> sorry. But a lot of you know business owners at some point will go through what to do when your best team members leave. Well, and... The underpinning message of that is it's change. And and at the core, we don't like change. No one likes change. We get used to a good thing and then suddenly... Suddenly you get... Yeah. And and typically it runs in threes. And in your case, it's probably... The count's probably a little bit higher it's than that. It's probably a little bit higher. So, we've so let's go context first. I want to frame this first, right? Because before you unpack this story, because there's lots of moving parts to your business because it's not one business. And for our new listeners, perhaps explain first. Good idea. So yeah. not only do I have Yvonne Lorry Salon, I've got Yvonne Lorry Extensions, which is a wholesale and education company. Um, and then also I've got a wholesale business um, in the US right. as well. So yeah. we've got multiple different diverse um, um, businesses that all tie in under one umbrella. So they all And could, you have a team. You have, and we have a team. You've got a quite I, a large team. I have quite a large team, which I've been so proud that we've built like 12 amazing, incredible humans. And I think, you know, I would never take it for granted because I've always been, you know, you come in here, everyone comes in. I, I've been really excited that we've been able to bring 14 girls together mm. um, and there hasn't been drama and i was going to say and on international women's day because it is today, and on international when, women's when this day. gets released it would have been yes, past that be would past. be international women's month that's right you have a business full of women which is amazing Doom. super women we're all so we're, fem- we're female, very pro female female and amazing vlad who's in the mix okay sorry, <laughs> that, has, <laughs> that has to deal with like 12 of us but we've had such a great run that it was bound to happen and I knew that it was going to happen one day. I just didn't re- realise when it rains it's going to pour. And what's happened? So obviously I have, we've just announced it yesterday <laughs> on Instagram. So um, first of all there was Taylor who moved on which was amicable. There was um, – we just weren't aligned. You know, people mm. move on which is yeah. great. We're still supportive of one another. And then Ash and Haley announced, you know, their pregnancies at the same, same time. We stop and have babies at some we point. stop and have babies. So, so and I was, did you ever, like, how long's Ash been with you for? So I know Ash Hayley's, has been with me for six years. Okay, because Hay- and haley has been with you for a year. How, nearly, a year. Well, actually, it'll be a year, sorry, by the time she goes on maternity. So leave. Ash was a teenager when she first... Ash was a little baby. She was, like, 17, turning 18. Right, and so you're, like... It's a dual role because you're like mummy to her as well. Well, I'm kind of like mummy, best friend. Yeah. You know. And boss. And boss, all rolled into one. And she was your protege, really. She, she was the... She really held that She really held that salon together. And so did you ever talk about... Because I, I guess six years ago, you would never have imagined that your salon, your business grew to the extent that it did. Oh, no. Did you guys ever talk about this point in time when she'd grow up get married oh, absolutely. and have babies uh, absolutely oh, ash was the first one that was like i'm pregnant yay i'm so excited like of course like that was always in the plan yeah but i didn't what, what i didn't plan for it was the the aftermath of all in 
a time span of like a month, no. everything just came crashing down. So two pregnancies, one exited, and okay, then that's three we've chalked up. We chalked up, and then and this was all in a week, wasn't it? This you was found? all in a week. Yeah, and then I was like, hold on a minute, like this is we're just coming off the bat of February, which we're just really coming back. You know, we had two weeks off with um, Christmas, mm. came back. Liv had three weeks off. She had to have an operation done, and then what happened? We got the COVID went through the salon mm -hmm. so it was oh, two right. weeks we had COVID when I was like that's I put right. a post up I did a video like I was like I think I want to go work at Bunnings <laughs> and that was the first inkling was like oh my god like oh my god like what if you know everyone's not here how do we how do we navigate this that was the first step and then it just kept snowballing after that so then after Ash told me she was pregnant then it was Hayley then Taylor had to move on and then I was like wait let me just check on everyone else let me see how everyone else is feeling because it was really weird after COVID everyone was in you know COVID really fucks with your brain mm. it really is and also what's going on um I think in the outside everyone's just in a little bit of a little bit of a fear I guess like transition in their own mm. life and also fear with what's happening with the economy and whatnot so um it was never really prevalent here but I thought let me just check on everyone make sure that everyone's okay mm -hmm. and that's when I went to Liv and I was like hey Liv how's it going what's happening and she just had three she weeks. just had three weeks off and a then lot of time to contemplate a life. lot of time to contemplate and then she ended up like you know bursting out in tears and was like yo I love you guys but I'm just not happy in Adelaide you know, and she has a boyfriend in Melbourne. She used to live in Melbourne when she took on this job. But like, honestly, like I had a moment of like, <clears throat> like for myself, but I just knew that it was going to come. Right. So that's you know? four in the salon. So that's four in the salon. And, and she then? was like, I just feel so <laughs> shitty because everything. And I said, don't feel shitty. Like it is what it is. We'll get through it. It'll be fine. And in that moment, it was Liv. And then I spoke to Tegan. And then Tegan Tegan's was your coordinator. Tegan's my salon coordinator. And then Tegan and I had a little bit of a moment where like, oh, my God, what is happening? She's like, yo, I, you know, um, I need to – her husband's business is taking off as well. I think we have spoken about it before as well, that she was always one day going to go work in his yeah. business yeah. and help him. I mean, why wouldn't you? Mm. Why would you hire someone else when you can do of that course. role? Do you know what I mean? So I was like – Oh my god! And then also Emma, which is my marketing. So now, so you hang on for a minute. Tegan Taylor. So Tegan Ash, Taylor, Hayley, Ash Haley, Liv that's are all, all out of the salon. All out out of the salon. So. Okay. And then now we've flipped to the education, the ex extensions, the back end, the back end, which I also knew. Yeah. That Emma was always going to move on. Of course, because she had spoken about this we last year. We had spoken year. about it last year, which I was 100% in support of her. Because but we like still... all things, it's like it's so far away. We've got plenty of time. We've got plenty of time. So Em <laughs> was still going to be moving away with her partner, but still working um, on her own business. And I was still going to be her client, like after she had left. But it was just this big reality check of, holy fuck, like my core team members that I actually adore and admire are not going to be here. Mm. And it was that moment like, yeah, I am going to cry about it because I had moments where it doesn't matter how resilient you are, you have moments where I was like, I don't think I don't think I could keep going. Like it's tough. How, it's so tough because yeah. <clears throat> oh, I should have brought a tissue box in. And Sorry, I, you can snot over your dress. <laughs> I, can, I can use this to blow my nose. I'll give How you, you give me yours. Um, and last time when I cleaned up shop, you know, three years ago before I found everyone, it was a decision made because people weren't aligned. Mm. So it was very easy to Different disconnect. Energy. Different energy. It was very easy. I was like, right, we still... You know, I was still great with everyone, but I knew that they weren't right. And I knew that I had to make a change. Yeah. And, you know, even then I wasn't prepared for it. Where I think the, the what we want to share today is what to do in this situation. It's a tough as one. Well. It's so tough. So you're you're toying with the idea of just crawling in a hole. and I, I did with a toy. I, I literally said to Vlad, I don't know if, I can, if my heart can keep taking this. Because everyone that I'm connected to, I genuinely you know, was a part of our journey and you love coming to work every day with them. And to find that is really fucking hard. Really is. Really hard. I feel like yeah. we had that beautiful dynamic. There was yeah. no drama. And even if there was issues, they got squashed straight away and everyone was working towards a bigger goal. And I just kept saying, kept going to the mirror every morning and kept saying, get your fucking shit together. Get it together. Just get it together. Did that work? 
a little bit, depending, because my hormones were kicking in. <laughs> Bloody and I was like, fuck them, what is happening? And I was trying to be this boss bitch and trying to have these CEO conversations and I kept having to leave because I was like I just a bawling mess. And I was like, how am I going to get through this? Um, you know, I had good days and bad days, but I didn't want to put it on the staff because I'm the fucking CEO. I have to you walk have around to have and the answers. I have to have the answers to everything. But inside, literally every day, I felt like I was <clears throat> like crumbling inside thinking I need to sell everything. I can't do this anymore. And then... Ironically, but I would have kicked. I would have kicked <coughs> some sense into you if you got to that point. Well, I mean, I know that you're there. I, like, I, I was there, but I think I. It's still I think charged I it together. It's still emotion. charged. Yeah. Yes, but what I want to share is turning a turning a leaf over. Like this week, I had a really important phone call from a stockist, a potential stockist. It was a new stockist, and here I am thinking my life's over. How am I gonna? you know, keep going forward and how am I going to keep inspiring everyone? I'm like li literally broke. I feel like broken into a million pieces. And it was just this odd phone call where she um, she had called me and said... So you didn't know this stalker? Story. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Um, it was a lead for an education right. call. Okay. She's from Sydney. Yeah. Um, and she said, um, uh, you know, I, I got into hearing a little bit about her story and her jo journey and what brought her to, to even think about taking us on a, as a brand. And she said something that just fucking blew me to pieces. I was like, now I'm really going to need therapy over this story. So she shared with me that one of her staff members who had been with her for six years had been, um, you know, nudging her to do our course. Mm -hmm. And she's like, if you're going to do extensions, you need to check out this, this brand. You need to check out this girl. And she said, I really wish I had listened to her. And she was choking up and I could see she had water in her eyes. And she's a mum of three. She had to go back to work after a... Um, her baby was like six weeks old or something mm. and she had to go back to work because her staff member who had been with her for six years that recommended you that recommended us mm. had um, gone out for a family weekend riding a boat I think she was riding a boat and tragically died fuck I know crazy right so that flipped you so that flipped me and what I was like what did you say to yourself I'm interested to know in that <clears throat> moment in that moment I just all my fucking crisis just went away i was like here i you am. wanted to you you went did you go into i need to help this well i stalkers. just went into I, I was just like whoa like here i am crying about you know losing team members but she's just she's literally lost you're losing two to have to, a baby who are still are living back. who are still yeah coming back who yeah. are moving on and yeah. who are living but imagine having that stress That's and having awful. a newborn Having three kids and you've got you've got to not only save your business but you've got to save your other team members. Yeah. And yeah. now she's telling me that the reason why she's connected me and I had goosebumps from head to toe is that she feels like this staff member is trying to tell her to reach out to me. Wow. And in that moment, I'm like, this is what keeps me fucking going. This is it was like a, a it was like a lesson from the universe. Doesn't matter how fucking tough it gets. You know, yes, there's systems and processes and all this in place, but we all get hit, you know, hard in different ways. And I feel like everyone's going to experience a, an emotional roller coaster with people that they, you know, value and are connected to in business that are one day they're going to fucking move on. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter under what circumstances it's going to mm. be. And I think this is a big lesson. If I can take a hit of five people all in the span of like one month to find the strength to keep going I was questioning myself mm. do you know what I mean so it just it was so weird I feel so grateful that we've got you know that community that love that just comes through it's just really reminding me and you know I hope that everyone else has someone in their corner that you know that they have that I know that like in your in your own space you you have that moment of like fuck this is this is tough and you know, there's that old saying, if there's someone, if you think you've got it tough, just go and speak. There's always, there's always someone out there There's that's always worse. someone out there that's tougher. But sometimes it, that's hard to receive because mm. it's like it, you don't, you want to validate your own story, but you, that was a gift, even he, like hearing the story. Because often we get told this, people off, you know, people, what were we told as kids? 
you don't eat your food, there's kids and starving kids in Africa, That's right. right? Well, we don't, they don't cross our path. Mm-hmm. Like we so see it doesn't it, affect you. It doesn't affect <laughs> us the same. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't say that flippantly, but that's the truth, right? Unless you go to Africa and witness it's it. It's true. But, you know, and then they say, someone, there's always someone worse off than you, mm. but you got the story. I got the story. Where we don't often get the story. Yeah. And what's interesting as well, I'll just elaborate on the story as well. So yesterday we posted up the news uh, publicly for the first time. So the pregnancy so pre- and live pregnancy going. and live going. So it was only yeah. three parts of the story, mm. and it was really interesting because we had that little glitch with Instagram. Mm-hmm. And yesterday, I didn't stop till like ten thirty at night, so I didn't even check my Instagram. But there was a whole messages that came through that I was only able to get to this morning, and it was really funny because there were so many business owners that had probably five business owners. Um, that had checked in with me and were like, oh, my God, yo, um, I'm so happy for the girls. You, you know, you've you've put it out into the universe amazingly, but are you okay? Mm-hmm. And it was really incredible because I didn't even have to share how I was feeling and here I am trying to put on a brave front and these business owners are sliding into my DMs going, are you okay? I know how this feels. This has happened to me and you will get through it. And what's even funnier about this is that the glitch with Instagram... I'm glad she finds it funny. Well, this is this is how I deal with situations, okay. usually pre-menopause. I would always, like, you know, have my humour. That's one thing that I had for me, ironically enough. But with Instagram glitching, it was so weird because I don't know if this happened to, to your account. I told you I was petrified to touch it. To them. touch it? So, so what happened with our accounts, part of this glitch is that it was bringing up old messages from last year when we were sending messages to let clients know that we were taking, you know, it said, thank you for contacting your Uncle Laurie Salon. We are currently going on leave and we're <laughs> going on a social media detox and we'll be back in January. So right. they're probably thinking, what, so, January, like <laughs> January 2025? So the ones that were messaging me on Instagram are like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so I looked at these messages this morning and I'm, I'm like, wait, let me just play around with people a little bit. So I'm like, yes, just to let you know, I'm checking out and I'm going into Glenside until January. <laughs> So then they're writing back in capitals, what the fuck, call me now. (laughs) And that's where I'm like, I'm only joking. It's a joke. It's my humor. It's how I'm trying to deal with what's going on. It hasn't been easy, you know, but thank you so much for your message. I really appreciate it. And then even this morning, a couple of the clients, that message came in and they bought us, you know, one bought us, Naomi, which she's going to be on our podcast one day. She's a counselor. So she understood she bought us a chocolate cake. She's like, here Food you go. Heals all. Food heals all. She yeah. was like, you girls really, really need this. And yeah. I was like, yes, we do. And it's got to be the right you know, chocolate. Oh, it was cake. beautiful. Well, nice. you had some. That was yummy. <laughs> it was so good. So that's the emotional aspect so of that's it. So the, that's the hardcore hitting side where, you know, essentially half your team are changing over and I've like I don't want to put words in your mouth but I've seen you kick into action that's pretty fucking impressive okay because what were you left to do like I've seen you in this in the in the in the storm stealth in this yeah but I probably don't realize it I probably didn't realize it because I was still going through the motion of course and the fear is there like you know I don't want to take away from the fact that I know the hair and beauty industry in particular they're struggling for staff so the hair industry it's not it's, as it's easy. A, it's not easy to find. It's not as easy to find team members. No like, matter how positive you are and how amazing you are, and this comes back to us coming back from Kerwin Way because I was actually even, which I didn't even say to you, mm. but I was actually, should I be going? You know, should I be going to this event? Should oh, I cancel? I would never <clears> have let you cancel. I know. Thank but, God. And, and to put in context, we booked this six months ago. We did so, book this six months ago. Yeah. And but it is hard. Like things show up. It's it's like on a much smaller scale. So we booked that six months ago and we would never have imagined that you were going through the storm. But let's – I want to work with that for a minute. It's much like exercise. It's much like anything that you want to develop as a habit – it's so easy to put it off to go. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too I need. Tired. I need to I be in the fear of what was happening, but it really was. And you saw the miracle of what actually. There was another miracle that happened when we went. Well, we our, our, our asses were kicked into action, and it's unusual for you and I not to talk in a week. But I so much so that <laughs> <laughs> we we have worked hard coming back. But part of you saying, "What's the action plan?" Part of the action plan is the people that we met there. 
Yeah. You yeah. know, that on the table that we were sitting at, like every second or third person that we connected to, funnily, ironically enough, is stepping into our business, both our businesses at some point, mm. to A, either help us collaborate uh, on the next part of our journey um, or come in to help... Um, yeah, to help as an like an outsource person that's going to be an invaluable resource to what's what's around the corner, yeah. how we need to pivot. And again, I'm left with, yes, I'm feeling like this, but again, my ass just kicks into gear mm. and I don't think the pressure ever stops. You just learn to readjust. Yeah, and it doesn't take the pain away. But it doesn't the, take the pain the away. The pain point is around change. Yeah, and then also... And fear. And, and fear. fear. And then also preparation. So how do you prepare? And this is something that you always taught me. You're like, and you would always say this even when I wasn't around. And it would be like someone would say something to you and you'll be like, you've got to understand Yo's a leader. She's always going to have plan B. Mm. Right? And you would always say that. And I'll be like, really? Do I? Yes, I do. <laughs> right? And un unknowingly, unconsciously. Mm. So now that I look back, now that I'm coming, you know, out of the thick of, of <laughs> processing of what's actually happening... You're kicking plan B into place. Well, I've, I've already kicked plan B into place and lucky I've been able to build relationships with other stylists and, you know, they've all come full circle now. So I was able to reach out and be like... So let's put, <coughs> let's put context. What mm. does that actually look like? Because the, the key message today is around a plan, like having plan B. Having plan B. Having plan B, which is essentially, you know, complacency will get you nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like as much as we love and adore... Our most favourite team members, shit happens. Life shit happens. happens. And this is about active, be, have an active pro hiring yeah. system in place. Yeah. So, yes. Which, yeah. which is ironically what I did for the admin business mm. when shit went sideways last time, but I didn't really have one for the salon. But it's not just that. It's like, it's one thing to have the HR, the hiring, but it's also who's going to do the work. And and essentially you've pulled, more mm. so this impacts the business, not the salon, but it does affect the salon to a certain extent. You've pulled apart every job description, every job that you had hired for in your business and put it back together mm. to come up with a new way. To come up with a new way. Mm. So it's just building that system and that infrastructure of having, you know, it's kind of like your SOPs. Like I've realised how important... Um, you know, having something in place so that that way when you do when you redo your next hire, you've got the information. It's yeah. not just verbal information. You've got, and I've spoken about, um, you know, our onboarding process, which when I when I listened back to the uh, episode, I was really part of pre-menopause is brain fog. And when I listened to it, I was like, fuck, my brain was mangled that day. <laughs> we did it in the afternoon. I was like, I didn't even articulate it properly. But... You know, part of the onboarding process is not just about your expectations, but it's about sharing what your vision is, what your goals are, what, you know, what experience you want um, your salon to, to offer. You know, that person, so how they're going to, your value system, how they're going to fit into that role. And not only how they're going to fit into that role, what, how you're also going to help them achieve their growth plan. Because here's the, here's the lesson, the biggest lesson in, in all of this. And this is what I've been saying to myself the last couple of weeks. Like, I chose to have a business and part of being in business is you need to be a leader. Yeah. And part of being a leader is, guess what? Is that your job is to grow people so that they can move on one day. Oh, I love that. Oh, right? That's the best thing you've said. <laughs> it really, really is. So can you just say that again? <laughs> just for those that missed it. I just want to hear you say just it again. Just for that, because that is the biggest thing. Your job as a leader is to be able to grow people yeah. to have them move on. Yeah, grow them better than you. Grow them better than you. Yeah. You know, it just so happens that everyone that I'm growing is leaving that I truly... They just couldn't be leaving all at the same time. They could be all be leaving at the same time. How dare they? Yes, how dare <laughs> they? But, you know, even like Liv, Liv is moving on, but she's still part of our company. She's working for a salon in Melbourne. She's, you but know, she's... amazing skill that she goes to Melbourne she's, with. And now we're also going to be training Liv to be a sales rep. There you go. As well, and Emma Sorensen's going to be coming on, which we haven't announced it, but there's but so are. many... It sounds like you are now. There's so many moving parts. Yes, sorry, Emma, we're announcing it here on the podcast. So Emma's going to be also coming on just one or two days a week. She's still got her salon and her team, so it doesn't take away from that. But I think that's the key thing is that, you know, having that growth plan in place, then that way when people do move on, you're not as traumatised yeah. <laughs> as what... You know, you could be because you're already thinking about the next 
evolution of That's team it. members that are going to come on. And right? I think, like, from my the contribution that I've had in this transition for you, it's I think conversation is so important because a lot of this, whether it be our experience at Kerwin Ray, experience. Let, let's talk about Emma Sorensen. Let's talk about everyone else that you're in discussion with. It comes from conversation. It's from just talking and connecting and building that network around you to go, what is out there? So I'm left now with like, you know, a fresh piece of paper. I need to put this back together. Mm. And I really think, I'm not going to talk about the salon because that's different. I really think that this next phase of how you're rebuilding your business is the best version correct and a it lot really of business a lot of business owners would be like oh are you going to go back on the floor like guess what i I'm asked like, you that can yeah. you blow dry my hair and, <laughs> and i said i'll do your hair but the reality is i can't go back on the you floor you really can't i can't because my vision is so now out of now i need to be you know even with that um stylist coming through sydney i know that that's my path and my journey yeah. but i also need to build the salon because we built such a beautiful clientele even naomi this morning was like what's going to happen with like they're freaking out of now. course so i want to come back <clears> to the, <throat> the salon because that's probably a very relevant for a lot of our listeners <clears throat> you've got four so salon coordinator and not all salons have salon coordinators so that has less impact but it definitely impacts your business but you've got your key staff members, two of them, plus Haley, who's been there a year, so she's built up her own client base. What has been your solution to overcome that? So because already, you've got maternity leave that you're dealing correct. with as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you navigate So here's this the one? thing, because really, if I start hiring multiple staff, it's not going to serve because I've got two staff that I'm committed to that are just going on leave to have a baby. Yeah. Who are planning on coming back. One day, yeah. And again, what happened when I had my little breakdown, I just again I was so lucky that I had, you know, so many people come to the table who I've been able to build relationships with that I was able to reach out. Conversation. Conversation and I've got like I, I haven't announced it yet, but I do have someone waiting in the wings. Yeah. That so I'm, they've come to you or did you have Well they've to come to me this? they've come to me multiple times but I didn't have the capacity at that point. <sighs> So to, this to just comes to... back to what I'm saying about that connection. Con and connection. And this so is important. someone that I've known in the industry from when they were a kid right. that has been asking for, you know, a number of times, hey, yo, do you have any? And I never had the space for it. It was just our, yeah. our times didn't align. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then I also had Maria who thankfully – who was toying with the idea of coming back, but she was scared because she's got kids now. She's got three kids and she was a little bit scared to be put back in the salon because, you know, with clients, you don't always finish on time. But it was amazing that she was like, yo, don't stress, I've got your back, I'm coming there back. So it was just, you know, Maria's coming back now to do three days and I'm training a new one, but I don't really want to hire another person because logically I'm like, shit, I need to fill that spot. Mm. But then I don't want Ash or Haley to be um, out of, you know, a job when they come back. Yeah, you're just going to have the childcare now. You're going to add the childcare. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have childcare. Yes, I've thought about that too. But daycare for babies. Daycare. And if I have to go back on the floor one day a week, I'm more than happy because I actually do. There's days that I'm Did like. you hear that, everyone? She's coming I back. I do. And there's days that I'm like, oh, you know, you do. What's that devil's advocate? Like. You know, you want to get off the floor, you get off the floor, and then I dream about just going back on the floor. I, it was a we've simple had days. the conversation. You want, I might just do it one or two days a week. Yeah. And then you had the reality. And then I had the reality yeah. of what is my goal, what's my vision, what are my priorities, what do I need to do in order to move the company, my business, my vision forward. Yeah. And then it's not it's not a joke anymore because if I do get caught back in the salon, everything else will yeah. It will not work. So that's essentially how I've been able to navigate it and then also having some external help because I won't be able to be of support. So Danny's going to st step up. That's so Danny's Danny. ready to step up and be a manager in training. Mm -hmm. So that's where she's excited about because she was also feeling the feels of, oh, my God. Like, she was going through her feels of, of she's the only one that's left. Last man standing. Last man standing. So, What's, yeah, you know. So it creates opportunity. Well, that's how I had to really create that. So that's why my ass went into gear and I'm like, here I've got... If I was to let it go and be in my feels, you know, feeling sorry for myself, feeling sorry for the, the clients, the salon, you know, it would have also... You could have lost her over it. I could have lost her over it mm. if I didn't kick my ass into gear yeah. and be like, no, I've got an opportunity now to help grow her. So not everyone knows how many, like, head count you've got in that salon, 
But Danny was, aside, a very brand new apprentice. Danny was really the last staff member. When she member. first started. So I just want listeners to really understand that's how vulnerable position. You've got like a, you know, a high turnover, high volume of clients coming through the doors that you've established many years ago. And in the face of a week, you had four of them, four in the salon. One and five, and then Emma in the yeah, and then one left plus the apprentice. Six. So it's six essentially. It's six people. Oh my god, that's six. right. So um, it's huge. It is massive. Huge. So I, there's no <clears throat> there's no surprises that you wanted to. I think I probably would have wanted to crawl in a hole. <laughs> and it, like now that I think about it, we like Ash had a review with the whole salon in January, and everyone was tracking great on track who would have ever thought you know so that that's why i say like reviews are also really important but yeah. even though when you have reviews things are going to change god we were just talking in bali in january we would never have <clears throat> ever thought never would have thought so you've come out of you, you i mean you're going yeah. through it you're definitely in the trenches now and it's it'll be tough times it'll for be you tough yeah in and terms of just like adjusting correct and that's the reality of it so <clears throat> you know anyone else that's going through it if you feel if you feel the feels reach out hopefully hopefully what we've gone through is also inspired you to maybe you know prepare that mm. have plan b start thinking about preparing for the job roles and if you had to you know if you had to downsize or if you had to upsize or yeah. if you have to readjust mm. just have those parameters in place so that if you if it does happen you don't spiral out of control and mm. think that there's no way out because there's always there's always going to be setbacks um yes. but you you can you can you know you can come out of it and i think this year is also really weird in our industry as well i think pre- people are preparing for change mm. so you know things are going to be up and down i feel like all year i feel like you know after the covid thing people did say that three year two three yeah, years absolutely after it was going to be the hardest yeah. so I'm all for being raw and real and saying this is probably going to be the hardest year, but I'm excited to see how I can come out of this and how I personally, you know, help the team navigate yeah. this and the changes. So And prepare for a bigger second half of the year. I think the end of the year, second half I'm looking forward to. I think you're it's going to be good. So I feel like I've hijacked this episode again. It's fine. <laughs> it's all about you. Your story. <laughs> all about... But I think it's an important and it's glad I'm glad that you said being a leader remember build them up to to help them grow and find their own feet love that yeah that's probably what is what's your advice on this uh i i am always my advice based on my own experiences with this is um complacency is the devil (laughs) in or because it's a little bit like i and you know i i don't want to say this flippantly it's like having a car accident no one wakes up in the morning to expect they're going to write their car off or even worse, have a serious accident. So true. But it's about putting your business and your life in a position where, you know, you can activate a process. It it actually just triggered a thought. This is a little bit off track before we wrap this up. I remember I went to this seminar um, a few years ago and he's a world-class speaker and he's very open about his personal life to the extent that he talks and it's really the messaging he he was giving was really to kick into action and he talks about having a plan like we have a plan for our business but have a plan for your life and someone was brave enough to go well what do you actually mean by that David and he was talking about he said I'm telling you I traveled the world I'm divorced I've got three adult sons Um, I'm still friends with my ex-wife but if I died tomorrow Everyone knows what to do. Mm. And that, to me, was that message of like, that's pretty impressive. And he said, and now I'm going to ask you the question. If you died tomorrow, is there a plan in place? That's so true. Who has that plan? You don't even think about it. He said, we all spend hours Mm. talking about in our business. We all put these PowerPoints and these plans together, but do you have it for your life? I mean, that kind of triggered a... And I went, oh, it's fine. Like I'm 46. What the fuck could go wrong? But that's, we never, mm-hmm. we never imagine shit that goes wrong. 100%. And do you know, I've also, with this, I've also had other <clears throat> stylists reach out, salon owners reach out and go, babe, I know what you're going through. Like when I was pregnant and I was at my lowest, 
I've had how many times have you heard this happen so when someone times. just has a baby or they're in hospital yeah. and their best team member or their best um, stylist or team member quits. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, I find when you're at your most vulnerable also it can happen because nobody's going to care about your business more, more than, than you. you. Right? Well, we said that together. <laughs> but it's true. So people are not going to be as attached to your business. That's just a given. So it's also think about, this has made me think about like, fuck, what happens if me or Vlad or one of us, you know, our health, what something, happens? I something know. happens. Definitely. Like, so this there. has made me think yeah. now again, apart from just relying on team members and staff, what happens if our health fucks up? Yeah. What contingencies do you have in place? Yeah. What do you do in that situation? That's it. Because people yeah. aren't going to care about your business like you're going to care about your business. So, which is fine. That's 100%. But I think with any setback, you have to realise that there's... <clears throat> You know, there's there's a way to come back from it. You just, if you think about it, I think it will also take the edge off when it does happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the universe, what do they say about the universe? Let's the your uni- back. Well, no, not that. I was going yeah. to say the universe will <laughs> only dish out what it knows you can handle. That's true. Even though it's happening and you're like, oh, I can't do this anymore, but it really is. There's always a lesson in it. I read it, like when someone said that to me one day, I went, that's bullshit because I think I've gone through way more than... I could mm. possibly handle. Right? Well, I'm like, still here to live this, uh, tell the story, but it's so true. The universe will only give you what it knows you can handle, mm. and what it's and trying to teach you. So that says a lot about you as a person because you've had a fair bit to handle over That's the last right. few. So years. there you go. To the people that actually think that I'm unemotional <laughs> and I don't, because it's I've an seen ongoing. You cry a lot. It's a, you have. <laughs> Oh, the last couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. the last couple of weeks. But before that, you've known no, me for years. I'm not no, really a crier. Yeah. But the, yeah. I'm really, really not. So it just goes to show. I think she's kicking into nano mode, but anyway. <laughs> it just goes to show, yeah. like, the babies don't are forget, coming. also, business owners. I mean, this is a whole other podcast, but we're fucking human. Oh, absolutely. We make mistakes. We're we emotional. Make mistakes. We have bad I think days. people, and this is what I don't want. People, we're not on a pedestal. No. No matter how no fucking perfection. successful, no matter what we, we're going to have bad days no matter how resilient you are you're going to have bad days and I think it's also if I can speak about it and be vulnerable about it and fucking cry on a podcast I think um you know I think as women we should all be there to support each other and especially when we're fucking hormonal PMSing <laughs> pre-meds it really is there's mental health but there's hormones and I really love to speak about it on this podcast oh well, so, I'm like a few years down the track on you. I'm um, the peri. The but it's peri not train. even that. It's even like pregnancy hormones. Oh, like yeah. what the girls are going through. It really is is something that True. we really need to speak about. And what do we do? And in saying that, here's what I'm going to do in the podcast today. I'm actually going to add two links in the podcast of who you can speak to. Um, if you don't have anyone in your corner of who you can reach out and speak to. And Naomi is one person who... Um, um, I'll link down her business of her counselling mm-hmm. and also Danny's mum is um, a mindset practitioner Amazing. and a holistic coach as well. So I'm going to drop down her, her links as well. So if you don't want to speak to us about it, you can always reach out and speak to someone else. Is there anyone that you want to add that no. they can speak to? I was, no, no I, I don't think so. I'm thinking I was jumping forward going see plan B, hormone <laughs> specialist. <laughs> bring on the podcast anyone if there's anyone that's a hormone specialist that deals with women i did meet someone actually that talks about periods and how businesses need to manage periods in the workplace i'm oh like that's God. cool really yeah anyway i'm off track now <laughs> we'll wrap it up <laughs> wrap it up thank you guys thank you for thank listening you. and cre- holding the space for me and having plan b having plan b thank See you guys you.